lesson with kids, I've always been comfortable with a two lesson intro process, although I've seen some that do just as well on the first. My assessment of that would be the more we've pushed price points is the further away from being willing to have a conversation with only one of two decision makers I get, right? So, you know, I, I've heard Master Clark talk a lot of times about mom comes up with a kid, he's enrolling mom with the kid and trying to load him up with rationale for why the dad's not going to get pissed off when she goes home and tells him about it, right? Um, but I tend to be on the opposite end of the spectrum with we got to have both parents and it's a requirement and we want to have you there. Uh, because I've had way too many of them implode because mom goes back and he says, what the hell did you do, right? So, and I don't mean that to be like a sexist thing, it's just percentage-wise we get an awful lot more moms who bring the, you know, the kid down than dad brings the kid down, does it without mom. And the same thing happens in reverse, it's just a much smaller percentage. Yeah. Price and commitment. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We really utilize that space between each other. We really try to maximize that space, right? You know, they they have to tell us how to do this. They have to know what to do. They send them home to the DVD. You send them up the audio CD. You send them up the CD. You send them up the audio CD. You send them up the audio CD. All this stuff, right? It helps, like, prep them for the second lesson. Now, if I was charging $79 a month, month to month to read it, you don't need anything. You know what I mean? You put $400 down, $249 a month. Plus to have a high conversion upgrade and have them prepped well. Yeah. 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 Right. Oh, well, that, well, that's easy. I mean, it's just. Yeah, we covered it all thoroughly there. Yeah. Yeah. Ad nauseum. Ad nauseum. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that, I mean, that's easy. I mean, it, that, there's no magic in it being 300. Um, you know, uh, Bill Clark and Steve LaValle for years, I think it was $100 savings. Um, but, I mean, the bigger the better, right? So, so you know, the, the, the 300 would be, it's normally 500 to enroll, we give you $300 savings, it's just 200 to register now, uh, plus the first month, so it's uh, 447 to register, 247 a month. I mean, that would be, that would be what it is, right? And so, you know, if, if you were in a situation where you're, where you're wanting to get $100 down and 167 a month, so you want them to pay 267 to begin with, it just becomes, it's, it's normally 350 and uh, we give you a $200, $250 discount uh, because blah, 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 blah. So it's $100 now, 167 a month, so 267 now, right? I mean, that's, you just translate it that way. Sounds so simple, but I needed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. I mean, there's no 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 detail too minute. And who's who's? To, oh, go ahead. Not this, not this, but I would I I I, I discuss this, right? Yeah. So so what I'm going to say is. You know, between now and next time, go through this. Inter go through this. Discuss your level of interest, desire to continue. Obviously, Ms. Ms. Jones, nobody comes in here thinking they're going to do five weeks of martial arts lessons. This is just to evaluate. Uh, since you made the donation to Children's Hospital, we'll actually give you a three hundred dollar discount on the regular enrollment if we go ahead and enroll Joey next time, right? Does that work if they haven't done a donation? Well, if we, we we use that language for everything. 
everything. So, so uh, obviously, uh, Ms. M uh, Ms. Ms. Jones, uh, since Joey came from Leewood, the Leewood Elementary program, if you go ahead and finalize the enrollment next time, uh, we'll go ahead and, and, and give you a $300 discount, right? Um, the main thing I want is like, something like a five or six week, they'll say, well, can't we just do the five weeks and then decide? Well, of course. Of course, I mean, the offer was five weeks for, you know, you just don't get the $300 discount, right? Uh, but again, what we found is that essentially all the kids, after a lesson or two, they know that they really want to do it, and they know the parents get a sense of with it whether this is a good fit philosophically for them. And doesn't uh, asking telling them you're going to give them a three hundred dollar discount? Doesn't that start to open up the question of well, how much does it cost? Sometimes, sometimes, and 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 and, and, and that's yet another question about it, two intro introductory process, right? Is at what point do you start talking about what the price is? And it's again, you're, you're watching your stats. So let's, let's, let's go to appointment first, second, enrollment. If I start getting a bad number first to second, that either means I have a crappy intro or I'm scaring them away, right? And if I've got a good ratio first to second, that means I've got a good intro and I'm not scaring them away, right? And to the extent that I can prep them pretty thoroughly at the first lesson to be ready for the, for the second lesson and the enrollment, I'm happier, right? So like if you take the training we're doing with the franchises, the standard is I really don't want to be discussing price much, if any, at the first lesson other than that. But if they're running 100% or something close to it, then if they, they shift into, like, like Jeff Smith will always, you know, give them a pretty clear idea of what it's going to be for the next time. You know, the tuition is going to be uh, uh, 197 to 227, and next time, I mean, he'll, he'll, get, he'll, he'll give them that. And as long as they're keeping a tight ratio, doesn't worry about it, because every, everybody who shows up enrolls, right? So does that make sense? I mean, you're just paying attention to make sure you're not like now blowing them out of the water, right? The disadvantage of they don't know any of the specifics when they get to the enrollment conference is some portion of the time you've completely blown them out of the water compared to what they expected, right? I'm thinking $65 a month and you tell me it's $265 a month and uh, I don't know, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so the advantage of they got a little bit of a range is it has time to sink in. The disadvantage of giving a yeah. yeah. The the disadvantage of giving them the range is they then make a decision on their own without you between the first and second they don't come back, right? So so that's why you're you're always watching these numbers like a hawk to see what you know what's working well, what's not working well, right? And and you also get you call you know you call confirm the second. Of course nowadays, you know they decide not to do it. You call to confirm the second, they never answer the phone, right? right? But um, you know what it used to be is you know you call to confirm the second, they answer the phone, and they say, well we just can't afford it right now. Or, you know we we really liked it, but you know I mean so you start hearing that a lot. That means there's too much disclosure going on here. Because you want them, if, they're ma if they make that decision, you want it to be made in your presence where you're working with them and helping them close, not, you know, not in a vacuum. So that seems to be then where the information, whatever information you have, <coughs> mile and audience, that really Right. Package and, yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Of getting them that after the first intro. Right. Something to take home all over. So yeah. Probably exactly. How many people have something like that that goes, I know I don't, but I need to, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and if, if everybody hasn't seen that, I mean, we've shifted most of it to an online version, right? So it's milehighkarate.com forward slash first lesson, F I R S T, and milehighkarate.com forward slash second lesson, S C O N D. Are they? Yeah, yeah, but um, but 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 don't miss the point too. By the way, you know, you said it's him that um, all the material out of the can that he sent home with him and stuff like that, all the material that they interact with, none of it gives us any information that could be a or at least in my opinion, right? So none of it reveals price, schedule, timing, commitment, sparring, <laughs> any of that stuff, right? right. None, it, it, all of that's kind of reserved for. Sitting down next to them, walking through those decisions. So it's 
Uh, and, and in practical terms, rubber meets the road. We're sending them home with the schedule, but we're explaining it to them, right? So, what? Yeah. Yeah. We we usually we usually are giving it to them on the first with explanation, right? So highlight the times, explain that really it's 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 16 to 24 classes a week. Um, right. At at the second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I do that during the second lesson. I help them set up their lessons, mm -hmm. their, their regular schedule, do work in the second half. Mm -hmm. after, after the actually right before Christ comes. So right. I, I don't want that to, I don't want them to go home with it and not understand that dad didn't hear what I told mom about the schedule and all that. I, I don't want to talk about that. I, I want to help them. Yeah, yeah. It seems to maybe help because it seems that we're getting a lot of the kids are overcommitted. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, ho ho hold it for half a second. Don't miss what he just said. And, it, you know, we, we've done thousands with giving them a schedule as long as it has an explanation and we walk through it. Uh, what Toby's saying is also right. See, there's not a right answer, right? Uh, Master Clark's uh, perspective on it, I've, I've had the conversation, is he doesn't talk about schedule till you know, check is cashed and the contract is signed and the deal is done and then works it in. Um, so, you know, he, he, he's doing the you need to be here usually uh, twice a week, but not going into any of the details to not get bogged down. And, and there's no wrong or right answer. If I was going to err, I think I would err towards their perspective, right? Um, the, the other thing that he just said, and I wouldn't miss it, is I have yet to see anybody other than probably us use testimonials adequately, okay? And I mean, for, the, for this group, what I'm always pissed off at him about is, well, God damn it, we need more testimonials. We have all these guys who have doubled their gross, but where is it on video and where is it on audio and what the, you know, I mean, that's always conversation we're having. But, Yeah. You know, because it gets to a point where you're like, well, 11 pages, you know, 13 pages. I mean, you don't get it by then. <laughs> you know, but I mean, I'm wrong. I'm wrong for thinking it. I'm wrong for thinking it. But, you know. Well, yeah, you see, I would rather give somebody 100 written pages of which they read one and are, like, impressed and depressed at the same time by the heft than to give them one that they question, Right. right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I want the holy crap re reaction, right? It goes all the way back to like when I did that extraordinary marketing book. You know, when when I did that the first time, I mean, I hadn't done any books, coaching, consulting, any of that kind of stuff. And in fact, I had tried to stay under the radar and not do any of that because my Biggest problem when I first opened was Century did that article on me, and every moron in the country was calling me, uh, wanting advice, and then they wanted to spend 30 minutes telling me what, what, they, what they did. Uh, and in fact, I got kind of a, a reputation of being arrogant, because I'd say, you know, okay, you have 32 students, and you need help with marketing, but I gotta tell you, I really don't wanna learn how to do what you're doing. So maybe uh, uh, if you have some questions, I'd be happy to answer it, but I don't really wanna hear the outline of the, of the 22 steps of how to have 35 students. Would piss them off a lot of times, but well, I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of times I say, look, I got 22 minutes, and I've got, uh, I, I, I've got an appointment, and I'm happy to help, but you know, I, I, I don't want a seminar on how to have 35 students, um, but, 
But when I did that, um, most of it was by email, but, we, we, but I did a series of postcards, and, and the, the reaction I heard from a lot of people was, I don't know who the hell he is, but holy crap, look at all the people saying he's great, right? And it wasn't that many testimonials, but I was very selective on who the testimonials were, right? So, so you know, all of a sudden I've got, you know, Nick Okinas, and I've got Jeff Smith, and I've got Junery, and I've got, you know, I forget who else. But it, it, there, there wasn't anybody there that didn't know who they were, right? So, and, and in your own case, for the schools themselves, we've rarely had many that were celebrity testimonials from a standpoint of like they're a national name. But as, as many as we can, it's the principal at this elementary school and it's an RN at this clinic and it's an MD and it's, you know, it, it's as much like credible local people as possible. But, but you do yourself a disservice not to have bulk right and and again I mean I wasn't talking to you guys I was talking to the other group out there um, one of the gentlemen who's a new member to the inner circle um, but we were talking about how to how to generate it who feels like he had plenty of testimonials okay nobody here's the easy way is just figure out when your busiest classes are gonna be and uh, there, there's there's three things you can do the next time you have a big testing or a big event, or a couple nights when you're going to have your bu busiest classes. Toby, what do we pay for that little camera? That's the one, that's the one I got on, on, on uh, closeout at Best Buy, right? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, it, it, the, the, but the reason I bought it was one very specific reason. Most of those little consumer cameras don't have a mic jack. That one did. And so I, you know, nowadays I'm a techno nerd on stuff like that, but I don't know how any of it works. I just like am intrigued by it. Um, you know, it used to be I was a techno nerd and taking all the photography classes and taking the video classes and, you know, knew how it all worked. Um, I, I had a Sony rep one time say, why the hell are you taking this class? I said, what do you mean? He goes, we're never going to actually be the guy who does the video editing and all this stuff. I mean, you're the CEO of the company. I said, no, but I don't, you know, I, when, when they do it, I want to know what the technology is, what they can do and what they can't do. So I know what, you know, if they, if they tell me they can't do something, I want to know if they're right or wrong and if I want to know what, what, what we're capable of. But... Yeah. And it's not because it's not that they're like hyper talented like 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 Zuckerberg. Mm -hmm. Zuckerberg was probably the perfect Right. So and Gates. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that, but it's they know the limitations of the coding language, mm -hmm. they know how it works, they know how to get, you know, and they know how to pick the right people. Yeah. You know, they know how to pick the people who really are eligible to code and stuff. Well that's what people that's what people underestimate about jobs. I mean, is he understood all of the technical underneath it all. He just wasn't the one doing most of it, right? Uh, you know, uh, for a long time he had the reputation of not knowing the technical stuff, but I mean, he was, he was doing programming. I mean, he, he uh, didn't he like uh, uh, Pong, that was a big video game, he had done all the, all the programming for Pong, and then he got Wozniak to get him out of a hole on it for Atari. I mean, that, you know, that's where he got started as a, you know, 17-year-old barefoot hippie who had bad body odor, you know? <laughs> so, um, um, but where I was going with that is, you get a little camera like that, and the, and the criteria is it has a mic jack, right? And then you get a mic that'll plug into it, preferably a little lavalier. And so now you've got a, 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 a $300 camera and a, what, $100 mic, maybe? So a $100 mic. And now what you figure out is a decent backdrop where it doesn't look too staged, but you don't want like the Coke machine in the background. We've got some video that has a damn Pepe, Pepsi machine in the background. Every time I see a Pepsi machine, it pisses me off. But, uh, but then what you do is you just start pulling moms with their kids all day. And you put the lavalier mic on them and you say, Mrs. Jones, I was wondering if it would be okay if I just ask you some questions about the program because we're doing a little video and, and wanted to get your feedback. Oh, well, sure. 
Uh, can you tell me how Joey's liking the program? Uh, well, well, first of all, you know, introduce your son. Okay, and introduce yourself. Great. Can and then you just ask him leading questions. I'll give it to you right now. The answer is no, but it's not very complicated, right? Um, Oh, that, uh, uh, that, that's that interview with Scott? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's really good. I had forgotten that that even existed. Um, oh, and, and, and in addition to that, uh, Greg, I mean, all of you guys have an IQ over 45. Uh, if you just go to milehighblackbelt.com and watch that renewal infomercial and you go to... Uh, um, uh, milehighkarate.com forward slash sec first lesson and watch it is you usually don't hear the interviewer but you see him responding to questions and then you can just, you know, I mean, just extrapolate from there but I mean the, the, the questions are, are, are pretty simple uh, and ultimately I'd like to have two types of testimonials as a new school it's tough for you to have the second type uh, the two types are my child got their black belt, it was the greatest thing I ever did. We made a decision, we were white belt to be here for life and make it a lifestyle. You know, I want stuff like that, right? I would never have thought my child could be a black belt because he was sexually molested. I would never have thought he could be a black belt because he was ADD. I would never have thought he could be a black belt because he's asthmatic. I would never have thought my daughter could be a black belt because she was crippled. I would never have thought I would be able to do it because I have a bad back, bad heart. You, know, you, know, you want some of that stuff, you don't want all of it to be that. But but from the standpoint of where we were at is you start asking leading questions. You know, lead, leading question number one, can you just tell us a little bit about you know, how you came to find us and why, why you're here? Uh, can you give us some, uh, 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 some thoughts on what your experience is like so far uh, with the school and would you recommend it to other people? Um, and, and you have to explain to them, look, we're not gonna be recording my question, we're recording your answer. So, you know, when you, when you answer the question, Mrs. Jones, could you say, well, the reason we brought Joey here was, because then they'll start saying, well, it's because, no, can you just answer, right? But, but, uh, but then it's, can you give us a little sense of what Joey has accomplished since starting, uh, starting here at the school? And you just say, oh, this has been the best thing ever, you know, uh, all of his teachers are telling me his attitude is better, right? I mean, just ask leading questions. And so, what questions do you want answered? What were your fears and trepidations and how did you um, uh, resolve that? What have you accomplished so far? What would you say to somebody who's thinking about doing this, right? And um, are you happy you did it? And, and now what happened? You know, for an intro, I usually don't go there. Uh, for the renewal, we do, right? If you remember that renewal DVD, is we have one in it that, uh, you know, I've shown it to martial arts guys, it's, yeah. But we have one and it says, well, you know, there was what, they, what they wanted was no way I could afford it, but then I, you know, I used the college fund, I'm so happy I did. And by the way, that same kid ended up with a full scholarship to, I think it was Cornell. Right, so she's saying I'm a single mom. I had to use the college fund to do this because I figured it's better to invest him in now. So, he, uh, and and so the same kid who was eight then ended up with a full scholarship to Cornell. I wish I, I hell I had that in there, right? Um, and probably should go track it down and plug it in. It's not on my list, but. Um, um, yeah. Right, yeah. 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 Do it, right.
Well, uh, well, th th think, think, think about it this way: is you're trying to answer the the the, uh, the question mark in their mind, right? The question mark in their mind is first: Are you a flake or are you credible? Number two is, are you sincerely interested in our best interest or is this just about you, right? In other words, do you just want our money or are you sincerely interested in us? And then it's, even if you have those two things, what I'm not sure about is, is the outcome of this program all about they do of activity or is there some more robust outcome that I should, you know, should find credible? And you know, just having a checklist on the door that says self-esteem, self-confidence, focus, and stuff doesn't convince anybody of anything, right? Uh, so what I want is I want a, a, a continual barrage of the teachers are so impressed, I'm so impressed, now he cleans his room, now this happens, now this happens, or, and, and of course the adult comparables to this. Then the next thing they're going through is, I know these other kids got great benefit from it, but are they somehow different than my child? And their initial reaction is they're different because, fill in the blank. They're different because my kid comes from a, a, you know, a divorce situation or my kid is in a single mom situation or uh, they're different because my kid has ADD and they were normal kids. And the, my kid is different because he has asthma and they were normal kids. My kid is different because, you know, he bit the teacher when he was in kindergarten. Now we have to watch him like a hawk. Yeah, I mean, you go, go through that list of what it could, could be. And we know what the big general categories are. My kid is awkward and this is an athletic activity that requires coordination. My kid is distracted and this is something that requires concentration. Uh, my child has discipline problems and I don't want to teach him to fight, I want to teach him to stop fighting, right? So you know what those list of questions are, right? And now you also know that you have students who fit in probably every single one of those categories, right? So, and, and hopefully some of them are like A-rated, A-plus, rabid enthusiast. And even some of the ones that aren't A-rated rabbit enthusiasts, sometimes on video, they say, well, uh, you know, I, I was rather worried because he's asthmatic, but he hasn't had any problems. In fact, I, you know, just as, as we're talking now, we haven't used the inhaler in, in, in four or five months. It seems to have been one of the things that helped wean him off of it, right? So you get those kind of answers. Mm-hmm. Right. It's kind, of, it's kind of like when you, if you've ever been around somebody who's mm -hmm. lost or gained a lot of weight over time, you don't notice it day to day. Mm -hmm. But if you're away from them for a couple of weeks, uh, uh, you notice, right? So, so that's what they don't get. They're there every day with the kid. The kid's getting a little better every day, so they don't notice it. But if you put them on the spot a little bit and they reflect, that like a lot of reflection, right? Yeah. They reflect, they go, oh, you know, now that you mentioned it, you know? And, and it, you get more, you, get, you build credibility. Right now, and, 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 and you know, I was getting into the technical of how to collect this stuff, but it is why everywhere in the school there should be reminders of this stuff. That the brown belts should be talking about it. They should have to do essays about it. They should be they should be standing up and sharing their stories. Uh, when we do those essays, when they get their uh, black belt, you know, what martial arts has done for me, we get some that are tearjerkers, you know. Uh, uh, one was a uh, 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 wife who was being physically abused for, by her husband and thought that she couldn't stand up for herself and thought that she had no other alternatives and, and now she's off into a professional career and into a new relationship and, and uh, I mean that, and that was like the last black belt test. And, the, um, and, and truth be told, I mean part of the reason why I've always been heavily engaged in the black belt process, read all of those essays, is we can get so 
distracted by the business of doing what we're doing, we forget the outcome. And as soon as you forget the outcome, now what you're working on is sales technique, not sincerity, right? Um, and, and, and I've never done this without 100% sincerity, but I have to keep reminding myself that it's not a pitch, it's real. You know what I mean? Because uh, if, you, if you back off of it, but from the standpoint of capturing this stuff, we got the, we got the, the 1080p um, a prosumer camera with a mic jack that's dirt cheap, right? Um, you know, go to Amazon or go to Best Buy. I, I was where? I was some damn place. Fresno. I was at Fresno. I was in Fresno. And for some reason, we had to pick up something uh, in Best Buy. And I wandered in, and they had it in the clearance stuff, right? So they had the sign on it, clearance. And just because I'm a nerd that way, I always kind of look, go look at the video cameras and say, oh, it's got a mic jack. Because, like, that's unusual. Like, the Sony cameras usually don't have a mic jack, but that Canon one had a mic jack. And so I said, how many of these do you have? And uh, I think I tracked down, what, two? Uh, and if they had had three or four, I would have bought three or four because, you know, I'd send one to Jeff and, you know, and he sent one. To, I, it ended up being I kept one, I sent one to you, right? Um, but, but then what you do is, is here's how it, how it works out. So, for this yeah, right, right, yeah, and see, we're, we're not trying to capture high quality video right now. If we were, we'd have lights and all that stuff. Um, mostly, we're trying to capture the audio track, so you have a record and the stuff. Yesterday, we'll probably turn it into a staff training deal. You know. Or transcripts. Let me, let, me yeah. tell you, let me tell you what my psychological challenge is and tell me if you think I'm right or what, what you think, right? My, my challenge is that if it's like a two hour video, I've got almost no chance of watching it. Right? Because I can put it on my phone and watch it there, I'll do it. But if you sit down in front of it, it's not going to happen. Right? So a lot of this stuff I'm trying to chunk up into small and small and small points. Is that, is that what's most useful? Or yes. Yeah. I, I like the video, I like to see it. Mm -hmm. but Right. A transcript in a form that I can mm -hmm. change. Right. Because, um, like this script. Oh, an editable transcript. Yeah, an editable yeah, So a word file. Like all, all the these things yeah. you did. Yeah. So then you can just cut and paste and. and I'm going to have to go back. I'm, I'm obviously. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back to this mm -hmm. and I'm going to have to listen to it. I'm going to have to uh, listen to five seconds of it and then stop it and type out what you said. And then I have to, we're going to have to listen to another five seconds. And then I might have to back up and wind it. And then uh, because the thing won't back up three seconds at a time, I have to go back three minutes and I have to start all over. Again. That's good feedback. Yeah, it's going to take me 20 or 30 minutes to get that script out of this. Because usually, usually when we would do a transcript, it would be a PDF. Well, I, I, but, but if he hadn't said that, it would never would have dawned on me, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, w w w w w and with a Mac, it's native. You can just cut and paste, and one thing or another. Yeah, but does anybody else consume transcripts relatively easily, or a little? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I like medium because I can see. I prefer to right. see that in my vehicle because that way, yeah. I, all the time I'm moving, I do a lot of that. I, yeah. I'm just constantly. Doing that. Well, we're con we're, we're constantly like. Um, yeah, I mean, just the last couple of months, we shifted to hardly mailing anything. It's all online. And an awful lot of other people had made the shift a, a long time ago, but I always thought it was a little ahead of the curve, right? And, um, you know, it, when it's online video for me, Toby, I just have it playing in the background while I'm doing other stuff. I really use the, the audio track. But a lot of times I like streaming video because I just pull it up on my desktop and it's playing while I'm working at my desk. And, you know, and, and sometimes you know, when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one calls, it's like I'm, I'm playing it for the no-show uh, and then you call and I, I've got it going in the background and I hit pause, you know, so we're on the phone. Um, but ba back to capturing this stuff. So now let's say that I do three hours 
of capturing video. In rough terms, you're going to probably end up with about a third of it that's uh, an A+. Plus. You're going to end up with a third that's uh, a to a, a minus to uh, C plus, and you're going to end up with about a third where they really don't say anything, right? Um, and I mean, in, in just rough terms. So, so if I talk to 30 people, I'm going to end up with 10 that are really good, 10 that are okay, and 10 that are pretty mediocre. Now, the nice thing nowadays, and it may not be, you know, Pete, you're pretty techno nerdy, but you know, for most of us. Just get a, you know, like my daughter can do this, she's 12, right? Is she can go into iMovie and edit it, right? So just find a teenager who's, who's good at this, because it does, I mean, it's not like, uh, it's not like brain science, right? Is, is get a teenager who can do it and just kind of go through it and say good, 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 crappy, crappy, good, right? And then what happens is if I end up with two hours, is that's going to transcribe to roughly 30, uh, 35 pages of written text. Okay? And now, at the very least, I've got two hours of video and I've got two hours of audio because I can just pull the audio track off of it, right? So I can turn this into an MP3, I can turn this into a CD, I can turn this into a um, um, uh, whatever the format is for online video. Um, so I can have this be online video, I can put this on a, on, a, on a DVD. But typically a CD capacity is what, maybe 70 minutes max, and a, uh, a DVD... Well, yeah, because we always go over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so but, but now you have a bulk of stuff, and really it's only two hours of real, of real content, but that's a lot, right? And then now what do you do with all this stuff? Well, I did three hours of interviews, make sure they're in discrete chunks. I can upload every one of them to YouTube, and now I've got search engine optimization, update the tags and so forth, and that's useful. I can syndicate that out to other, other video feeds. I can plug them up onto a uh, to Facebook and all the kind of social media. In fact, the YouTube lets you automatically, when you upload it, it syndicates it out to what? If you upload it from your YouTube account, it'll go to Facebook, Twitter. How many other sites does it natively? LinkedIn? Well, just if you upload to YouTube, you can tell it to go to, like I think I, I have mine set up where it automatically up, updates Facebook and it automatically goes to Twitter. and. But you know, there's, there's, there's a certain number of them with a setup, it just, you can automatically you know, put it up there, you don't have to even click a button. Um, but, but then now you have plenty of video for online, and for most online applications, is you're better off to have a whole bunch of 45 seconds to 90 second clips then you are to have one big two hour deal, right? So when you're putting it on, on the website, uh, and, and, and the one mistake we made it at one time is we went through and interviewed like 100 people but didn't keep a good record of name and who they were and all that stuff. And when you put it in written form, that's really important. In video form, it's not as important. And if if I have the teenager to do it, I'd love to have it scroll over the screen. You know, kid's name, parent's name, you know, uh, what school they go to, all of that kind of stuff, right? I mean, with the kids stuff, you have to be a little careful about privacy. Uh, be sensitive, but not hypersensitive to it, right? Um, is, it, is this helping, right? But see, but see now, once you've done this, Yeah. Did you, see, did you see that, uh, uh, that commercial 
Well, I would, I would start first and get a bulk of it in the can, right? And then what you want to do after that is, like for a while, every time we had an intramural, I would find like, you know, the, the, the black belt who was in a cast or something who couldn't participate, and I'd give him a camera and say, go start interviewing people, and then upload it all to uh, YouTube or go start filming little clips, and uh, just, just for search engine stuff, right? Not, not, because we had enough bulk of everything else, we didn't need it for any other purpose. Um, but then what you want to do is you want to think about what are specific emotional high point events that you have. Because that's where you really get the good stuff, right? I mean, the best testimonials we have, and we use the, these all for the upgrade, not for the enrollment, to tell you the truth. But the best ones we have were the Black Belt Retreat Weekend. They had all shown up Friday afternoon. They had been up most of the weekend. And we did interviews all day Sunday. And we didn't tell anybody what was going on ahead of time, although once the first one came and went, you know, now everybody kind of knows what's going on. But we just took them one-on-one -on -one into the back room and had a, uh, it was Scott, had a videographer who they didn't know uh, start asking them questions about what the weekend was all about and how their progress was. And, 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 that, you know, and those are the ones where we had like, mom is in tears and I'm so proud of him. And you know, I would never have thought, I mean, we, it, it, was, it was really emotionally compelling stuff, right? And, and, you, and you really got in that context, like no defensive barriers and really kind of you know, pouring out from the heart of, of, of what it was. And because sometimes, you know, you'll kind of see visually that they're a little like, I'm not really comfortable in front of a camera or I'm not really comfortable talking about this. And, and they'll give like short answers. So, you know, you're pulling a white belt and it's just kind of random and you, you, you know, those may not be as good. But if Billy just got his gold belt and you can pull them kind of one-on-one, -on -one, just have these conversations, uh, then it's better. <laughs>